Mm -hmm. That's drunk. Hello and welcome to part 4 of this video series taking a look at some of the best Super Nintendo ROM hacks out there. In the video description below you'll find the tools you'll need to get these to work properly. To sum up, you're taking the normal game ROM and using a utility program to join it with a patch which modifies the game accordingly. Most of these are pretty easy to get to work, especially since all the links I have listed here come with a readme file that guides you step by step to make sure that you can get the game to work. In the past, I've talked about everything from Metroid Super Zero Mission, to Link to the Past Parallel Worlds, to Super Mario World Return to Dinosaur Island, just to name a few, and all sorts of other modified games like Super Mario Kart, Final Fantasy VI, in addition to randomizers for games like Link to the Past and Super Metroid. If you feel like I've missed something in this video, I recommend checking out earlier videos in this series to see if it's been covered there. Some of my personal favorite ROM hacks involve Super Mario World, mostly because I've put about a gazillion hours into that game over the years, so it's always fun to try new stuff with the same gameplay and physics and stuff. New Super Mario World 2 Around the World is made by Rilaru of Brazil, and here we've got 16 different worlds with over 90 different levels, with all new music, new boss fights, some tricky ghost houses, you can even wall jump in this game, which is really cool. Really, this is one of the best ROM hacks I've ever played, it really has a certain polish to it that makes it come across as an official release. Be forewarned though, like most ROM hacks, this game can get really difficult, but I still have a lot of fun with this one since I discovered it a while ago. The level design is really creative while staying reasonably balanced, and it's got a good pace to it. The enemy placement is just on the edge of being too difficult without being Kaizo level ridiculous. The game never really feels unfair or anything like that. Definitely check this one out. If you want something truly different in the realm of Mario, there's Super Mario Logic. This one was made by Final Theory, and it's nothing but single-screen puzzles that you have to solve, with the goal being to get the question orb, which is hidden away somewhere or buried beneath a pile of blocks or whatever. There's 94 total levels, and the game does a really impressive job of building from one puzzle to the next without resorting to cheap stuff. Most of the puzzles involve collecting the right number of coins so you can pass through a numbered block. Even Yoshi gets involved, which is pretty cool. The game starts starts out pretty dang easy, and it's pretty simple to figure out some of the basic mechanics involved here, but the further you get into this one, you start to see just how clever this one can get. There's even a nice quality of life mechanic here. If you get stuck or screw something up, just press start and select at the same time, and it'll reset the puzzle and you can start over. This is a really fun playthrough that does a fantastic job doing something different with Super Mario World. If you'd rather stick to more traditional Mario gameplay, there's plenty of that that can be found, like Mario and Luigi Cola Kingdom Quest, made by Gamma V. This one's got a bit of a different art style, some interesting music, and a very cleverly designed user interface that deftly slides in and out of your viewpoint so it doesn't clutter up the screen. What I like about this one is that, like Mario World 2 around the world, it's not freaking impossible, and it's very approachable even for novice players. Sure, it gets pretty dang tough when you get toward the end of the game's 74 levels, but this has has a familiar feel to it. It's got that professional style polish to it that can be hard to find with a lot of ROM hacks, so I definitely recommend checking this one out if you want more Mario in your life. I should note that one major highlight of this hack is the music. It takes tracks from all sorts of other games and gives them kind of a Mario spin, everything from Sonic and Knuckles to Final Fantasy VII and even Chrono Trigger. Of course, it wouldn't be a proper ROM hack video without mentioning something related to Super Metroid, and here's a really interesting one called Super Metroid Arcade, or King of Crade, made by Tutel Lioren. It's a randomizer with an arcade-style structure. Every door you enter will bring you to a completely different part of the map. It could be an upgrade, it could be an item, or it could be a boss fight. It's pretty crazy. When you enter the room, the door behind you locks, so there's no going backward. There's different game modes here, where you can play this way for a certain time limit, or you can do an endless run where you just play while trying to accumulate as many points as possible before you die. Endless mode in particular gets really tough after a while because enemy damage increases the more you play, and upgrades like the screw attack are temporary. There's a scoreboard that tracks the best scores on arcade.supermetroid.run, and there's even achievements you can unlock. This is easily one of the best and most creative ROM hacks I've come across. I highly recommend checking this one out. 
The original Star Fox is one of my favorite games ever, and yeah, certain aspects of it have aged like milk, but the Star Fox Exploration Showcase patch is so freaking cool and goes a long way not only with fixing certain issues, but adding a ton of options. First and foremost, you can play with a second player and it's not split screen. Look how freaking badass this is! There's even a mode that allows you to play with three other ships controlled by the computer. It is freaking awesome! There's a huge list of options here, like a god mode, infinite nova bombs, an endurance mode, there's new ships, new weapons, there's even a new game plus mode where you fight, uh, something called Mecha Luigi. Okay, hey, bring it on, I'll end his skinny green ass. This hack is a massive amount of fun that adds a ton to the original Star Fox. Another game that has about a gazillion patches and hacks is Final Fantasy VI, and one of the most comprehensive is a hack I mentioned in a past video, Return of the Dark Sorcerer. This is a huge project with nearly four dozen people involved, and they're consistently putting out lots of updated content that keeps this one fresh. There's an all-new cast of playable characters with their own custom movesets, a completely different story, new overworld maps, new music, lots of new options when it comes to espers. It really is like a brand new game that just happens to take place in the same universe as Final Fantasy VI, and what's really cool is that they keep making updates to it. Even Cloud and Tifa show up, and hey, wait a minute, what is that idiot doing here? But yeah, this isn't any kind of sequel or prequel or anything like that. Return of the Dark Sorcerer is entirely its own thing, and it's really freaking good. Here's another interesting one for Final Fantasy VI, T Edition. It's actually one of the more popular ROM hacks in Japan, but it recently received an English translation. Man, it's crazy enough that we're getting such great translations for regular ass games. Now we're getting translations for ROM hacks? So freaking cool. This hack isn't as crazy as Return of the Dark Sorcerer, and it stays much closer to the source material, but it does add a lot of new content, but it's all connected to the original story. There's new locations, new dungeons, new bosses, some new attacks and spells, along with some bug fixes that help balance the game a little bit. Bear in mind here, the ROM file you gotta use to get this one to work is the Japanese ROM of Final Fantasy VI, not the American version. But yeah, if you're looking for just more Final Fantasy VI, you won't be disappointed with the English translation of T edition. A Link to the Past is another game that's starting to get some momentum in the ROM hacking world. Of course, there's the hugely popular Randomizer, but some folks are doing solid work with brand new puzzles and adventures, like Secrets of the Past, made by Super Scudge. Scoof Super Scudge? This is one of those that can be a little rough around the edges, but it's got a fantastic amount of creativity on display with the way some of the puzzles are laid out. It's still approachable without being ridiculously difficult, and it's got all new dungeons with a new overworld. Check this one out if you're looking to scratch that Zelda itch. Now, some folks out there are kind of sick of seeing the same games get modded, as evidenced by this video so far. Sure, certain games lend themselves much easier to being modified since the tools available are much more accessible, but hey, other games are on their way too, like Super Castlevania 4, with this remix hack made by Boga Boga. Man, you guys gotta start getting some normal ass names for once. There's not too much majorly different here, so it's not that far removed from the original game, and that's totally fine. It's just new level layouts, new enemy placements, some control modifications like holding the A button to run and the L button to moonwalk. This ROM isn't perfect, it's got some hiccups here and there, but hey, if you want more Super Castlevania 4, then here you go. Finally, here's another game that doesn't get too many mods, it's an endurance patch for Top Gear. I know this game is absolutely massive in South America, so I figured I'd give this game a shout out. This one was made by Gamehack Fan, and it increases the number of laps for each race and rebalances the game as a result. You can't just overpower everyone with the red car here, especially on tracks with extra laps that don't have pit stops. There are some races that are up to 10 laps long, and it's always hilarious to see the computer AI opponent run out of gas and helplessly sit there like an idiot, waiting for other cars to ram into it so he can crawl to the finish line somehow. Again, this hack isn't perfect, it could use a little tweaking since the computer is kind of a moron when it comes to how and when to refuel when that option is available, but hey, I love any kind of tweak that adds to the challenge of one of my favorite games ever in Top Gear. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!